All right, so here's the deal. I'm not gonna be uh, fixing anything in this video. This is just a, uh, not a rant, but more of a vlog. And um, what I'm talking about are car lifts. All right, so let's talk car lifts. My original plan when I decided I was gonna build a garage is that I wanted to have a car lift. And I mean, I'm tired of working on my back on the concrete when it's cold, when it's hot, when it's rainy, when it's windy, when it's dark. And I thought, you know what? If I'm gonna build my dream garage, then I'm gonna get a lift, my dream lift. So. The only problem was I didn't know which lift. So I started doing research. And so they're basically, I mean, as far as real car lifts, there's two types. There's a two post and there's a four post. Um, everything else is more of a hobby lift, um, giant compromise. I mean, they make these portable little jacks. They make these little scissors lifts. All of those are, or they're not lifts, those are more like glorified jacks. Um, so I wanted a lift. And originally I thought a two post lift because a two post lift gives you plenty of room to work underneath. And I thought, well, you know, that's great, maximizes the space. Um, the drawback to the two post lift is one, um, they're not the safest. If you don't balance it correctly, there are cars that flip over on it all the time. Um, then there's the fact that you have to crawl underneath it to slide the plates in there to get the car up. Okay, take two. Uh, let's see, where was I? All right, <coughs> excuse me. Two post lifts, four post lifts. The two post lift has the advantage of being compact because you basically have two posts. That's it. And then you have the platforms you drive on them. As far as two post lifts go, there's uh, two different styles of two post lifts, basic styles. One style has your cables going like on a little speed bump, so to speak, on the floor. There's a little plate. And uh, I think that's called the plate lift actually. And then there's the other one where it's got a beam on top. It looks like a, a metal beam, but the cables actually go through there. And it, for those of you that aren't familiar with the way the lift works is um, there are cables, real big metal braided lines between the two. And that's how it jacks it up and that's how it keeps it even. So you've either got to put uh, speed bump on the bottom which I absolutely decided I didn't want because when I'm doing oil changes and I move my um, you know my oil container around or a transmission jack I don't want to have to deal with a speed bump and it's a trip hazard and you know it's just it's ugly and you got to clean around it get dirt in between and there's a million reasons why I didn't want a uh, plate lift so I wanted one overhead and that creates problem of, problems of its own too because then you know you jack your car up and it, there's a safety on that little bar that it, it hits that and then that's what stops the lift, a safety device. Um, but it also takes additional room up on your, in your ceiling. But I just, you know, after thinking about the two post lift and the fact that you can flip a car on it and they're not good for storage. So there were a lot of downsides to it. Most of those are 220 volt and um, then you have to worry about um, you know, the fact that uh, you cannot move a two post lift. So you get a two post lift, you mount it, and where you mount it, that's the end. That's it. You get no choices here. The other problem with it is that in your concrete pad, um, and I, I was prepared for a lift, so I did a five inch slab. Everybody says minimum four inch thickness. You can go six, eight, whatever. I did five inch, and it's everywhere, five inch thick. In anticipation of putting a two post lift in, 
Then I read later on that uh, you can't put it on an expansion joint. And if you followed along with my video series, you know that my floor was power troweled, which means that they use a lot of the cream from the concrete. First they score it and you've got your expansion, your control joints that are all uh, scored in the floor. And that's supposed to be where the concrete cracks, although it doesn't always, rarely actually does it follow the control joints all the time. So they put cream on top, power trial, because I told them, I don't want cracks, I don't want expansion joints, I wanna roll my tools back and forth, floor jacks, whatever. Uh, didn't want that, so that's what they did. Now, if I were to put in a two post lift, I'd have to find out where those control joints are, and then I have to space it off. And I did that, because I knew exactly where they were gonna be. And the problem is, at the time, I wasn't, because you've got a foot overhang almost out the door there, and it throws all the dimensions off. And so if I were to put, do a two post lift, I would have to put the posts right in line with my window. I've got a window over here, but I've got one on the other side. And I don't want to open the blinds and see a post. So that means I have to move it forward. Well, when you move it forward, it changes the whole uh, you know, working space in the garage here. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're going to have eight feet at the back end of the car that's kind of wasted. I don't, you know, you really can't put toolboxes and stuff back there because it's a roll-up door. So you really want your lift closer to your door. But again, that means that I'd have to have a post right in the middle of my window. And, you know, it's not portable. It's just, it's all the wrong reasons. So I decided I'm going with a four-post lift. So the four-post lift has a lot more advantages than um, disadvantages, if you ask me. And I'm not a professional mechanic, but I've been wrenching on cars, motorcycles, boats, you name it, for years and years and years. So I've got a lot of experience. And I'll tell you, when it comes to a four post lift, the number one reason is because it's portable. You can, um, they all come, well, most of them, most of the major ones. Benpack is a little stingy. Benpack lowers the price to compete but then they turn around and make everything an option. By the time you're done, you are paying hundreds and hundreds more than your standard uh, lift. And I'll get into Ben Pack a little bit later. But um, so you've got these four casters and there's a little pin that goes on the bottom of each leg and you put those in. When you lower the runways, the runways at the very bottom rung will push the casters down, in essence, lifting all four posts and then you can roll it around. And the casters are pretty large they're about eight inches and they're non-marring, so they're supposed to be good on the floor. And you know what I've gone through for my floors. Um, so it should be able to take it. So number one, it's portable. Number two, it's stable. Because there's four posts, you don't have to worry about the jacking points and balancing the vehicle just right. Uh, number three, because the posts are on the corners, you don't really have to worry about them getting in your way too much. They will, anywhere you put a post, it's gonna be in your way. But on a two post lift, those posts are right by your door. And that's a hassle. You can't open your door all the way. Um, you know, to compensate for that, they've actually moved the little jacking plates and they, they had some fancy terminology I read about. But, um, where you could then put the, the vehicle off center because one of the jacks was shorter than the other one. And so it changed the balance and it enabled you to move the vehicle back and forth. That's just too much science. I mean, let's face it, you get a, a four post lift. It's got two runways, they're giant long platforms. You drive up on them and that's it. You're good to go. So uh, that was another reason why, well, those are a lot of reasons why I went with a four post. Um, on top of all of that, the four post, because it is portable, I can wheel it out into the driveway and I can foresee that happening. I have a rotisserie that I put my vehicles on and I was restoring a car once and I actually literally did put it out in the driveway because it had so much rust. Every time I hit it, I'd lose two pounds of, of rust dust everywhere. And so I chose to put it out there and I power washed the heck out of it and then I rolled it back in. You can do the same thing with your uh, four post. The only difference is you can't do it when the vehicle is up. On my rotisserie, the only reason I could do it is because it's just a shell and there's no engine tranny and there's no weight from the rear end, so that was easy to do. On a four post, you drive it off, move the lift, drive it on, lift it, 
And so you can do it like that. It just takes a few more minutes. It's not a big deal. The four post lift is 110 volts. I don't have a problem with 220. I put it all over my shop. The problem is big extension cords and that's more of a hassle. And the, uh, the, all the new four post lifts, they're running off of 20 amp circuits and I've seen people run them off of 15 amp circuits, but my entire garage is wired at 20 and 30. Uh, 20 and 30 amps so I can run a cord out into the driveway if I want and lift away So I'm getting a lift now the question then becomes which ones now there are so many out there. There's uh, What is that triumph lower end one? Um, uh, even these no-name ones that, that are out there. I looked into all of those you can get them on Amazon you can get them on eBay and um, I, the more I researched, the more I found out. And what I found out was most of those use what's called a C-channel for the post. And then they'll take a piece of metal, usually, and it looks like it's like quarter inch plate steel, and it has little rectangular cutouts, and those are for the stops. And so they put C-channel, then they put that rectangular plate within the C-channel, and then they mount that. And then when your lift goes up, it goes click, 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 click every time it hits one of those uh, or channels, those little cutouts, rectangular cutouts. Now, from what I've seen, and there's a video in particular where a guy had a bend pack and he had another lift, a four post lift, and he pushed on the bend pack and the whole thing was wobbling. There was no car on it, but it was wobbling. And I've read about that more than one occasion. And so I started looking for lifts that didn't have the C channel. And what I found was there's like, two or three different ones and a couple of them are the same. So one of them was a company called Backyard Buddy. And um, you know, you'd think that company would get wise to the fact that, yeah, it sounds like, you know, it's gonna be a low budget model. In essence, it's one of the more expensive ones. And when you compare the features between that and, and there's the same company makes another lift called an Advantage Lift. Uh, and the Advantage Lift is got more features than the Backyard Buddy, but it comes in at a lower cost point. So I'm not really sure what they're doing there, but um, you know, I mean, just from a strictly, you know, uh, professional sounding name, Backyard Buddy, come on, change that. Uh, it makes it sound like Shade Tree Mechanic, and it gives you a you know, right off the bat, you're starting to think, oh man, they cut corners, you know, so that they could get this to the homeowner. They didn't, uh, as far as, you know, the quality and the safety that they built into it. But it just, you know, besides not sounding good when you compare the backyard buddy to the advantage lift, what you find is the advantage lift, and I'm talking about the 9000 series, um, has more features, it's taller, it's longer, um, it's just an all around better lift, and it's couple hundred dollars less and then there's other lifts that basically they copy the the uh, um, design uh, there's another company called wildfire and again wildfire I mean you know you could come up with a better name if, if you're coming up with a, a lift company why not call it you know uh, something you know you know the Iron Man series or something something that instills confidence instead of uh, you know backyard buddy and wildfire I mean, that's all I need, you know? It makes you think you're gonna get a short in your motor and the thing's gonna go up in flames. But anyway, that's those two companies. And, and again, Advantage and, and Backyard Buddy are basically the same company, but they offer different lifts and it's really odd because when you start making the comparisons, unless you have to have a smaller size uh, and you have to pay a little bit more, you know, why would you do that? So after doing all the research, the reason I went with Advantage is real straightforward. It's safety, it's quality, and it looks like durability because uh, they use really thick posts um, and they're square. They're five inch square posts. And so that gets me to Ben Pack. So I was doing the research and I saw all these Ben Pack units out there. And everybody on, on, in, on the internet, YouTube, you know. Uh, the youtubers they get a bend pack and whoa, you know, they got a bend pack lift But when I started looking at them, they were doing the C channel and It just it looks flimsy and it is flimsy. I mean you can tap on the metal and hear the difference between the posts but They were asking premium prices 
And you know, you read things online and, and what you find out is, oh, the old Ben Pack is better than the new and they've gone cheap and now they're outsourced to, to China and blah, blah, blah. That's not the reason why I didn't go for it. But when you start looking at the Ben Pack line, then all of a sudden you come across this new lift that they have. And lo and behold, they're copying the Advantage uh, lift. So it's a square post and um, you know, they're supposed to be competing. But when you start looking at the specs, again it's like are they pinching pennies i mean counting beans because let's face it the advantage lift has a five by five five inch by five inch post the ben pack has a 4.75 by 4.75 post now that's the only thing is that translates into cost savings because that little uh extra metal is going to cost more than the five by five on the advantage lift. And so I started to look at that and I started to realize that that lift was designed to compete with the advantage. I'm sure they were losing money. Uh, Benpack is a much larger company than advantage, but um, if you ask me, they're playing catch up. And why would I want to buy the, the company that's copying? I don't care if they're the premium company, but they're still copying advantage and um, they're not doing it well. They should have gone with a 5x5 five five or even a 6x6 six six if they really wanted to outdo the other one. But to go smaller makes no sense. Um, and there's a few other things about the, the Ben Pack that I didn't like. Like I mentioned, you know, you don't get ramps. You, you got to pay extra. The Advantage comes with aluminum ramps, not the Ben Pack. Um, Advantage comes with wheel chocks. It comes with trays, uh, drip trays, plastic. You can get metal, galvanized, but they have plastic as standard and they're included. Um, and the rolling uh, jack, when, you, when it comes to the bend pack, you have to pay extra for all of that. You have to pay extra for casters. You have to pay extra for the, the drip pans. You have to pay extra for the ramps. And aluminum ramps, they're over $200 extra. They're included on the Advantage lift. So the bottom line is this. When I made the decision and I did all the research, it came down to one thing, and that was uh, the Advantage lift. Now. I found out later on that there is a warehouse up in Phoenix, so they're not going to charge me shipping. I get to, you know, hook up a trailer, a U-Haul or whatever, take a little ride up to Phoenix. And yeah, it's a couple hours away, but the savings is, is pretty good. So I'm going to go with the Advantage lift. I've already ordered it. It's on its way. And um, so which model did I go for? I'll tell you that in a minute. So here's the lift that I got, and if you want to pause it, you can read about it. And um, you're probably curious as to what I paid, and I will show you. This is my out-the-door price, including tax and any other charges. I didn't add anything on here other than there was a warehouse pickup fee of $75. So that's the lift that I got, and it is the DX9000 XLT. It's my ice machine. The DX9000 XLT lift. It's a four post lift, comes with two 36 inch aluminum ramps, one rolling jack tray, flapper automatic wheel stops. I'll explain those. Rubber wheel chocks. It's 110 volt. Uh, it says premium power unit, mobile caster kit. There's four of those. So, what are flappers? Well, if you go to AdvantageLifts.com or if you look uh, on YouTube, you can find videos. And it's the later one, so six months is probably too old. Get, look for a video that has a newer date than that. Now, um, a lot of the lifts where you drive on, the four posts, they have a stop at the end. And basically, it's just a little channel and there's a little aluminum or steel plate and they drop it in there and that prevents your tire from going over. You hit those stops. And um, what Advantage did, and this is a really neat idea, is they put some flappers. So when your lift is down, the flapper actually creates what looks like a tiny little ramp, but it allows the car to drive on. And then um, the other thing that's different about the uh, Advantage lift is, with all the other four post lifts out there, they hang the ramps on. Now, if you've got steel ramps, like you get with uh, the Ben Pack, 
and I think you actually pay extra for the steel ramps, which is silly, but uh, the steel ramps, they're 36 inches long and they are heavy and they're diamond plate. And so you put those on your four post lift on the uh, runways and then when you jack your car up, the ramp just kind of comes down like this and then it keeps going up with the lift and you got this big three foot metal plate, three foot by 18 inches hanging down behind each uh, runway. And that to me is a hazard because you're gonna run right into that thing. Plus it's super heavy. And so then when it comes down, you know, it hits your concrete and then it kind of slides itself out. The Advantage has a much better system. So you take your aluminum ramps, which are included free, and you put those on the ground. And then when you lower your lift, that flapper hits the ramp and then just creates a little space there. So it's smooth, a little uh, spacer, like a bridge. But um, you drive your car up and then when you lift your lift up, the ramp stays on the ground where it belongs, out of the way. And the car lift goes up and those little flappers come up on both ends like that. And that way if your tire starts to roll back, it hits the flapper in the back or the flapper in the front. And it's a really cool system and it looks good and it's practical. And uh, Advantage is the only one that I have seen that has that feature. So for those reasons, I'm getting the uh, Advantage 9000. It's extra tall, extra wide, and I know it's gonna be big, but you know what? I'd rather have too big than too small because I'm only buying one lift. I'm not doing this. This is not a commercial business application. This is my garage workshop where I restore cars and I fix cars and I do regular maintenance. And so when it comes in, I'm gonna do another video. And so you just keep walk, watching. It's gonna take uh, probably maybe a week or two to get that lift down here. And then I'm gonna do an assembly video and um, that's it. I'm gonna show you one other thing that I did to my garage and I'm not sure I'm even gonna use this. But when I was planning, I knew I wanted to put a lift in. So I put in one additional outlet and I'll show you where it is. So here's my garage. There's my low outlets. I've got high out, mid outlets. I've got really high outlets. And then there's that one right there. That's a blanking plate. And that outlet I put in specifically just for a lift. It can be wired as 220 or 110 and it can be a 30 amp circuit because of the wiring that I put in there. So um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it. If I do use it, I've got a special plug that locks, you turn, push and turn, and um, that'll keep the cord out of the way. But that's when I was anticipating, you know, more of a permanent fixture. Now that I've got one that can move around, I am not sure if I'm going to use that, utilize that plug. Um, I could put enough cord on there to still roll it around. Um, just not sure if I'm gonna plug into the floor outlets, plug into the wall outlets. I mean, I've got a lot of outlets in here. So it's just something else that I have to think about. But you'll see it when we get to the next video um, because I'm gonna assemble it and plug it in somewhere. Okay, thanks for watching How To Heaven. Keep watching.